Hello and welcome along to part 21 of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. All the 21s today as we come back for a big, big game at the top of the Welsh Premier League. We play Seffen Druids first in the start of a doubleheader before Barry Town United away. After a poor start to the season, we have caught them quick. Barry have started dropping points, we have started gaining them at speed. TNS again really disappointing. And we've got a chance to go top by the end of this episode. So it could well be after this one that building a nation is now the important bit. We've built the club. We've got them to the top of Wales. Now can we bring the rest with us? That's what's going to be important. There have though been disappointments since the last episode. A very quiet end to the transfer window. A few disappointments in cups. So let's go and take a look at them. If you are looking forward to this episode and you're enjoying the series so far, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. And there's two live streams every week as well. So please do turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts every time we go live. And of course, there's much, much more in the eye above and from the podcast channel as well. But let's get back to Bangor City. You can see for today's game, we are potentially missing our keeper. Though Seth and Druids are missing their best player as well, so we've got to be careful with that. We can't reduce the expectation too much, because I'd expect we're still favourites. But we've got the schedule, we've been doing really well domestically. As you can see, we've dropped four points more in the league. We did lose in the SPFL Trust Trophy, but everything else has gone swimmingly, and we've stopped conceding goals as well. So let's look at those who have contributed to that. Before we look at the goal scorers and the heroes from each match, let's look at the addition to the squad. A controversial sale perhaps as well. Liam Nolan had left the club for Kettering, a former side from our FM20 head coach story. But Gwyn Tudor, one of the star youngsters from the academy, we sold him to TNS. So this was where we started to think build a nation. It's only £2,000, but we've got a 50% sell-on clause in case the reputation of the league rises. So hopefully he'll do well there and then we'll be able to get bigger money from him in the future. Or maybe even bring him back. We replaced those two though with Gus Mafuta. We were looking at Ferdinand and Felix who were on trial in the last episode. Both wanted bigger money, both not quite as good as this guy. So Gus Mafuta has joined us. He's three star ability, three and a half potential on 325 quid a week. Crucially happy to be a squad player, happy to sign a one year deal and can cover as the holding man as well. Experience at Boreham Wood, at Hartlepool, Salford, basically loads of National League level experience. And he's just been a really solid player for us. You can see three assists in four starts in the league. One in the cup as well. He's just been a really good addition. And he's coming up to fitness now. He's looking good. And I'm really happy he's been added to the squad. Just what we needed after losing a few of the others. We did have to deal with, just after you left us last time, a little bit of a revolt from the dressing room. It was led by Samuel Fanian and our backup left back, Ryan Law. And it was about our poor form. So you can see Fanian there was worried about it. We've made a promise and everything's great now, so I'm not sure why it's not resolved. Does it say how many more days there is until this is judged? Because of course, with the European form at the start of the season, we are going to lose games now. I'm sure there used to be somewhere you could look at the promises. So tell me in the comments below if I've missed it. But I think so far, it's all looking pretty good. We're back on track, we're doing really well, and we're just two points off the top of the table. And this is how we got there. So after the Carabag game, we were here for Seffen Druids. We beat them 3-1 today's opponents. It was a good result. Amadi Holloway with a brace and Pixley with one. Then we were held by Newtown at home. This one, much the opposite. It was a poor performance. Harbottle made an individual error for the goal. Amadi Holloway scored again. We then had deadline day. Mafuta came in, of course. He came off the bench for his debut in this one as Aberdeen's reserves beat us in a 92nd minute. A tournament I'd love to win in the future, but at the moment, it's not the case. A two-wheel draw at home to TNS. This is when we were in big trouble. Because don't forget, at this point, it was six points from six games. And we were still in the relegation playoff place at that point. Holloway got a goal, as did Mo Silla. Hock and hole with an OG, I'm afraid. But then, the corner turned. A 2-0 win with a late brace from Samuel Fanian at Cardiff Met Uni. A 4-1 win at Aberystwyth and a Mardi Holloway hat-trick and Mo Silla with his first. A 2-1 win at home to Carmarthen, Pixley and Boot with the goals there. A 3-0 win against Airbus, K. McLaggen with a brace, still at the club. And Jack Rogers with his first as well. A 4-0 win at Averford West. That was a Fanny Ambrose, Pixley and a Mardi Holloway with one each. A 2-0 win at Connors Key, Pixley and Fanny Ann. 
very much the two stars of this side now. A 1-0 win via Riley Harbottle at home to Aberystwyth. And 2-0 against the basement side Lynette Lee. Amadi Holloway ended a mini goal drought. And an own goal wrapping up a comfortable victory. So all of that action leaves us on 27 points after 13 games. Two behind Barry with the same played. And clear of everyone else with less played. So it looks like it's first or second again. I do not know for the life of me. Ah, oh, they have. TNS have changed manager. I was about to say, I don't know how he's not lost his job. He was sacked yesterday. So that might be big progress. I don't know if this is a caretaker. It is. So we'll keep an eye on this because the next manager of TNS could be the most crucial thing in this Build a Nation series. We'll keep an eye out for that. Keston Davis still the key man, but we've got two big games. TNS not a problem for this season. Barry Town, if they do well, could they go professional? That would really help us out. But for now, it's all about Seth and Druids and then Barry Town in that absolutely crucial title clash. So let's go and talk to the boys, get the lineup picked for today. We had Hankin in for the last one, Owen Moore back in at right back. Change a goalkeeper, so a youngster into the squad this time in Gwenault. He's not really had many opportunities, so good to see him doing well. I can see Fanny Ann's wanted by EFL clubs. He's not actually really improving attribute wise. Something I'm finding quite difficult, all the others like Pixley are. But he's playing well, so I probably shouldn't worry. Mo Silla will come back in for Mafuta, who's going to drop to the bench. And I think we've got our strongest 11 available, bar the keeper. So Gwenault's covering in goal, his first ever league start, I think. Oh no, did he make one last year when we won the league? He did. First league start of the season. He's improving, he's doing alright. Now two-star ability. So certainly no complaints about having him in. We've got Moore and Bolton at fullback with Harbottle and Hockenhoe at centre-half. Goodridge, Boots, Silla and Pixley, the first choice midfield four. And Samuel Fanian alongside Amadi Holloway. Both contributing goals, both in double figures. So let's see what the first half brings. Can we get a victory? Can we keep the good run going? And can we move to the top of the table? So it looks like the big warning man is Dan Griffiths up top, who's a very good player. Ben Milnes has joined. He was at TNS last year, I think. And they've also got Piero Calterucci, who has started the series with us. We didn't play him. And he moved on on loan. And now he's here at Seven Druids. So a good side. I'm sure I'm going to get, get a little comment or two about my pronunciations again. I can only apologise in this one. I do struggle with some of the Welsh names. As Pixley's motivated, we go into the first half. Can we get ourselves to the top of the Welsh Premier League? Defending champions on a roll. And can the away side stop us? Well, just four minutes in, we've got a corner with Goodrich. A Mardi Holloway bullet header. I tell you what, he's had a much better season this year. It's what we expected when we signed him. And we're in the lead already. It's looking fantastic at the moment. We're top as it stands. The touchline tablet has moved in again. Has anyone else found that? Every time I play, it seems to go back out and I have to pull it across again. It's very strange. As Goodridge gets it on the right-hand side to Owen Moore. Delivers back post. Holloway again. Oh, he's on absolute fire. Amadi Holloway with two in seven minutes. And it looks like it's going to be a very comfortable win. What a start to the episode. 12 minutes on the clock and it's a goal kick for our visitors. Long downfield by Evans. Amadi Holloway intercepts. Finds Fanny Ann. Through ball to Pixley. He's in one-on-one -on -one here. It's a great goal. Brilliant strike into the roof of the net. Keeper got a hand on it, but it had so much on it. And we need 3-0. I've got to say, we've not been this convincing for a little while. You saw the last few games. 2-0, 1-0, 2-0. And here we are again, absolutely battering this lot. They're down in 11th in the relegation playoff. They are one of the weaker oppositions. But we're putting them to the sword really well. Their tactic doesn't help. They've tried to sit 11 behind the ball. And it doesn't work out for them as Dan Griffith scores. And suddenly, we've got something to worry about. Because he was the danger man. We asked to close him down. And he was left with 10 yards of space in our penalty box. But 10 minutes to the break, we lead 3-1. Those little lapses at the back are a problem. Gwenall got beat too easily, but he's a young keeper. He'll learn from that. And let's hope it doesn't affect the result. As Fanny Ann blocks a clearance. Falls for the left back who gives it to Hopkins. And here's Ben Milnes wide. If they get a second, I'll start to ring the alarm bells, to be honest. The panic will set in as Phillips goes back to Morris. He picks it up on the right-hand side. Cuts it into Milnes. Time on the ball. Over the top to Griffiths. He's in again. And Griffiths has chipped the keeper again. This time he misses the target. It goes wide. I'm a bit concerned about Gwenall going down so quickly. And I'm very concerned about Griffiths getting in behind so often. We've set Hockenhold to close him down as we reach half time at 3-1. 
but there were alarming signs there. They probably should have got a second. So let's tell the lads to prove a point, get into the second half, and hope we don't slip up any further. A fourth goal hopefully would wrap it up. 25 to go. It's a throw-in for the visitors again. They are piling on the pressure a bit here as the ball comes into Harbottle, heads it away, but it's straight back to them in midfield. Milne's over the top. Gwenault does well. Holds the ball. Really good play. And we'll make changes in a minute as the kick is awful from the keeper. After praising him, he gives it away. Harbottle hacks downfield. It's just got a bit bitty. We've lost a lot of that quality as Moore loses out in the air. And this time, Gwenault does recover it. Now, can he find the right ball? It's a good kick this time. That's much better. Gwenault puts Fanny Ann in. Good save by the goalkeeper. And with 25 to go, it should have been four. Just 20 left on the clock. We're back as Griffiths picks it up. Left-hand side. It's led the line brilliantly for them. It's back out to Calterucci, our former man. He goes into Milnes. Over the top to Griffiths. It's 3-2, is it? No, he's offside. Oh, why is he getting in so easy? It really is a concern. I'm going to replace more with Hankin. Hockenhull. I don't know if I've got anyone. Bodenham can come on, I guess. And Boot or Silla can be replaced by Gus Mafuta. Three subs made with 10 to go. Now let's see if we can hold on. Certainly not the comfortable date we thought we were having after 12 minutes. But we have won it after three minutes of stoppage time. It's comfortable in terms of scoreline. But they certainly ran us close towards the end. They had some great chances in the second half. But we've won. And I think that means we're top of the table. We are. But Barry have yet to play their game in hand. So they could be back on top by the time we face them. Unless, of course, they don't play their one in hand before that. I think we've got a good week or so. We have. So you'd assume they're playing at the weekend. But let's skip ahead to the Barry game. And find out where we are come next Wednesday. Well, I'm not quite sure what this is. We're back for the Barry game. We're back in second place because they beat Seven Druids at the weekend 5-2. But now we've been linked with a loan move. I didn't know you could make bids outside the window. Or is it to join in January? I don't know. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But it's a player called Alexi Hino. Now, it looks very good initially. Four-star ability, five-star potential. So I'm hoping this isn't going to be a bit of disappointment. Because our director of football might have just found a gem. He's pretty good. I'll give him that. He's not really natural to our tactic. He's got quality on the ball. He's not the best finisher for a centre forward. Not the best composure. Potentially as a number 10 he's a prospect. And he's certainly a good player for the squad. But I'm not sure he's as good as I was hoping. And with him on two and a half grand a week at Chelsea. How much is he offering to pay? It looks like a bit too much. 30%. You are not paying 750 quid a week for him. And I just saw there Chelsea only wanted 10%. So why is he offering 30? Not something we can worry about now. But here it is. First v second. Barrytown United v Bangor City. Whoever wins is top. If it's a draw, unfortunately for us, Barry will stay top. But you sense there's a, there's a little bit of inevitability about this now. So Brett will come back in goal for Gwenel. Everyone else is doing alright. A lot of the reserves have played in the under-19s friendly at the weekend. So they're back to fitness as well. And I think that is our exact first 11. Hankin's getting very close to knocking more out of the team now. And it is an area of weakness in the squad. But it's certainly a positive sign for one of our youngsters. So there's the 11. There's the 18. The only change is a Brett in, in goal for Gwenault. And we get into the big top of the table clash. Hoping to get a good result and a strong performance against Barrytown United. Certainly becoming the main rivals of this series. So let's see what they've got in store for us today. Well, we've had a warning to close down Diakite. The best player in the league is Evan Press. He's on the bench. The best defender in the league is Luke Cummins. He's on the bench. James Cook, our former player, starts. Cezlevich is there. He's caused us trouble in past games as well. I'm a bit frustrated that they're going weaker. Surely they would have saved players late on in the other game when they were 5-2 up as well with 15 to go and rested them for this one. I don't get it. But will the week's rest be an advantage? Will the professional training make a difference? Doesn't look it early on. Barry have had the shots and they've got it on the right with Cezlevich. Here he is surging down the wing. Back to Bio. Inside the pattern. Time on the ball still. Keeps it inside. They're playing quite narrow, which I didn't really expect against us. Surely their success would come out wide. There's the through ball. It's through to the Faroe Islands, man. Into Jenkins, who scores. And Josh Jenkins, the EFL loan player, I think it's Bristol Rovers he came in from, has given Barry Town United a 13th minute lead. And we've been outclassed so far. We're in big trouble, despite Barry resting players. Not a good performance. Five shots to none. 
and Barry are deservedly ahead. Though Hockenhole picks it up in the middle and now we try to create a bit of magic. Pixley to Holloway. Silla back to Goodrich. Where's that through ball? There's no width. Pixley to Fanny and here's Holloway. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. The centre half tried to get a foot in. Didn't get enough on it. And Amadi Holloway continues his good scoring form. 1-1 with our first shot of the match. It was a lovely work move. But we are very lucky to be level. Barry Town United 1, Bangor City 2. And we've only had two shots on target. And that one was barely a shot. It was more a cross went wrong. As Bolton finds Holloway. We are getting on top though. And we certainly played better since the equaliser. As Bolton finds Harbottle. To Bolton again. Back to the keeper. Very sensible play. And Zabret's got time on the ball. To Harbottle. To Bolton. Time out on the left hand side. Not really rushing it just yet. We're keeping it well and we're looking for the opportunity as the clearance downfield is intercepted by Goodridge to boot. Here's Pixley. He's got two men in. Goes alone instead and it is an absolutely stunning strike. Mitch Pixley makes it three and Bangor City are going top of the Welsh Premiership. Didn't look like that half an hour ago but we are completely on top now. And here we are on the left with Bolton. Really trying to rub it in. Rub salt in the wounds. Get a fourth. Let's get the goal difference up shall we? Harbottle back to Zabret, who can start again. Out to the right-hand side to Owen Moore. Back to the keeper again. I'm not sure why we're seeing all of this, because it's certainly not key, unless it's going to lead to something. But three passes back to the keeper, and we probably could have started it from here. As Owen Moore finds Hockenholt, there's the switch. Amadi Holloway's in, the centre-half misses it. And we have been ruthless. We've not been great, but we have been so, so clinical when we've got in. It is 4-1 at the hour mark. And this is going to be a heavy inflicted defeat on Barry. And confidence-wise, can they recover from that? Because they've still been the better side. They've still had more possession. They've still got the higher expected goals. And we've somehow got a 4-1 lead. I don't quite know how. 20 minutes to go. Let's make some substitutions. Bodenham on for Harbottle at the back. Bolton's on a yellow as well, but they've got no left back. So Silla replaced by Mafuta. And Goodridge on a yellow in the holding role. He's going to be replaced, I think. No, do you know what? Pixley can come off today because he's not done much aside from that goal. Rogers will get 20 minutes and we'll try and keep this lead intact. It looks very good so far. As Barry have got a throw on the left, 15 minutes to go. Davis into Diakite, the star striker. Crossed in towards John. Header down to Cieslovic and now come into the right back. Into the striker again. Good save by Zabret. And Hockenhull gets it away. Really good opportunity for the hosts and really good goalkeeping. Great to have our number one back there. And that's the difference it makes as we're up the other end with a Goodridge corner. Headed away as far as the centre half. He gets it back to Goodridge into Holloway. Heads just over the crossbar. Great to see such a good performance from Barry, to be honest, because we want them to go pro. We want them to keep succeeding in Europe, but we want to win the title still. It's a very strange mix. It's sort of that sense of community and balance in Scottish, Northern Irish and Welsh football. It's something we've talked about before, particularly with Cliftonville, particularly over on the podcast, as John's got in for Barry here and nearly gets them a second in stoppage time. It's tipped behind for a corner, as a Brett does well. And we're back as Luke Cummings gets a yellow card. A free kick on halfway into the final minute of stoppage time. And you've got to say, after a terrible first quarter, this is a good day at the office. Mafuta the sub picks it up. Lovely 70-yard ball back to his keeper. Not the best directed, but Zabret has time. Finds Bodenham. Into Hockenhull. Long downfield towards Rogers, And we lose out in the air again. As Diakite's gone wide. Probably not as effective out there. Davis over the top though. John's got himself in. And he's been forced backwards. Good closing down. And the pass is absolutely awful. Out for a throw into Bangor City. And we're going to win this one 4-1. It'll be taken as the three minutes are up. We just need the referee's whistle. It doesn't look like it's coming for now though. As it's long downfield by Cook. Why have we not seen it yet? Goodrich into Mafuta. There it is. Barry Town United 1. Bangor City 4. For the first 40 minutes they will feel very hard done by. But what a turnaround it is. We're going to tell the lads we're pleased. Keep that confidence flowing. Nine league wins in a row now. And surely, after going top of the league with the same games played, this is our chance to run away with it. The professional side would always be dominant eventually. We've got our way back to the top of the table. And attention's turn to building the nation in January. And of course, that's what we're going to be back for. So if we go and have a look at the schedule... I want to leave it a little while really because there's not many games going on. We've got the Winter World Cup in November. So we've actually got a sort of month and a half off. We saw it in a head coach for those who saw yesterday's episode. You've got to see the last two of those if you haven't. 
we sort of saw the effects of the Winter World Cup. So we've not got a planned game until the Welsh Cup third round. Whether that will take place then or not, I'm not sure. But then we've got our, our rivals twice in a double header over the Christmas New Year period. And TNS away at the start of January. So that's when we're going to be back. Bala Town away, TNS away. A lovely little break in between. So we can probably actually plan our January transfer window. See what we can do with that extra money Europe's bought in. It's not declining too quickly. You can see it's gone down by about 100 grand in the last month or so. So we should stay in the positives come the end of the season. If we can keep selling one or two on, I'll be quite happy. But we're spending three and a half grand under the wage budget. We've not spent a transfer budget. We've done everything we can. But Bala, the rivals, the side that held us up last year. So let's see how we get on this time. If you're looking forward to that and you did enjoy this double header, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Two good attacking performances. A little bit shakier at the back than we would have liked. And after five without conceding, we've got to be disappointed with that. But otherwise, it's all going very well and we're happy to be where we are. Back at the top where we belong. If you want to stay up to date with the season, make sure that we get success in the league and then prepare for another big season in Europe, of course. Please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily content releases on the channel, as well as two live streams every single week from Dundee United. There's links to all the playlists in the eye above, as well as the podcast channel, which I'm part of. But a massive thank you for watching your continued support with this series, the channel in general, and the podcast too. And I hope to see you next time for January Transfer Window action, as well as a big game against the rivals, a Winter World Cup review, and the other professionals, TNS, under new management. I'll see you there.